the fourth kind of relationship that existed between men and women, and this affected the role and place of women during the time of the prophet, because these were the traditions he found in his society. And the revelation came to oppose some of these practices. And you can see why girls would later be treated differently from boys, to the point that the Arab men of Arabia at the time of the prophet would rather bury their daughters alive. There was a reason for that. Because human beings don't just do things like that. They have a reason for doing that. The fourth arrangement that existed in Arab society, the woman with the white flag. Today we call them prostitutes. But you see, the conception that the Arabs of pre-Islamic period had is not like the concept of Las Vegas prostitutes, you know, that they live in one place. No, they have this idea that when a man, you may have friends, they go to the woman with this white flag above your tent. Now, when this woman gets pregnant, prostitutes don't want to get pregnant. But these women deliberately wanted to get pregnant because they have these friends who are jahilun, but they may be good warriors or good horse riders. They're great fighters. So they want to be the mothers of these warriors. So these guys go and visit them. When they get pregnant and they deliver, the guys will come and look at the baby and they say, oh, this looks like Musa. And Musa is the father. That's what they used to do in Arabia. So you had these monogamous, polygamous, Musa, and relationship with women with the white flag. When Islam came, it found this kind of practices among the Arabians. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was guided by, by Allah through the Quranic revelations to abolish some of these practices that existed. And of course, monogamy and polygyny survive. Now, polygamy had no limit. You know that even in the time of Dawood and Suleiman, they had many wives, dozens of wives. But when the Quran came, it put not only a numerical restriction on the number of spouses you can have, but it imposed a psychological condition, which is much more difficult. And that is, you must be fair to the wives if you want to take two, three, or four. That psychological restriction is more burdensome because very few men, if any, are psychologically balanced mentally to maintain two wives, much more four wives. You see what I'm saying? And of course, that is where the Quran comes down on this psychological restriction. And of course, with the Quranic revelation, the relationship between men and women was defined. Mutha was curtailed. Monogamy was encouraged. Polygamy was encouraged if you can meet the numerical and the psychological conditions. And of course, our scholars have written dozens, thousands of books on these issues. Now, 